Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you guys are doing well today. We all have our opinions about vintage watches, the watches that we like, the watches we don't like. And one of the things that I think we also have our own opinions on as collectors is the condition in which your watches have to be in in order to join the group of watches that you have decided to call your collection. Um, condition can really vary um, really widely. You can see there are watches that are really show their age and perhaps are could be described as really beaten up by some collectors. Uh, but on the other hand, you can actually find watches that are in pristine condition, untouched, um, basically like new. Um, and we're talking about vintage watches here, which is very difficult to get. New old stock, I think, is a way of describing sort of the other end of the spectrum. But what is interesting is another person looking at that scale from beaten up to new old stock might actually interpret it differently. They might interpret the beaten up, uh, they might say beaten up actually means it's showing its character, it's showing the experience that the watch went on, and then new old stock is no one actually wore this watch, why didn't they actually enjoy it? So we all have our opinions on those. I thought I would show you two different watches in varying condition and sort of talk through the things that I look for as a collector and what's important to me when it comes to condition of vintage watches. Um, this is simply going to be me kind of giving you my opinions on these things and maybe pointing out a couple of things that collectors look for um, when it comes to the condition of the vintage watches that they decide to purchase and add to their collection and enjoy over the lifespan of their of their of their um, watch enthusiasm. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do one of those um, over the shoulder uh, looks. So I'm gonna have the two watches uh, in front of me. We can kind of talk through a couple of things about these two specific watches. The two watches I'm going to be looking at is um, the first one is the Le Coutre Memovox that we just got in for our store. And the other one is the Caravelle uh, Diver, which is also available in our store. They both have varying condition to them. And so I think it's a nice way to sort of compare these two watches and perhaps what people are looking for in them. Um, so without further ado, let me flip perspectives so you can take a look at these watches. All right, so let's take a look at these two watches um, that I have here in front of me and have a discussion about condition. So I think first I can sort of introduce the two pieces that I have here. This is a, the watch that I have here is a Caravelle um, diver that was produced um, in the, I believe uh, in the 1970s, has a real 70s sort of a vibe to it, stainless steel watch with a bi-directional bezel, has day and day complication um, and then a really interesting sort of seconds hand that has a plane at the end of it, which I think is the reason why I really love it. Um, the watch comes on this sort of 70s inspired strap, which is actually from Mido, so it's not the original strap that comes with this, or I guess bracelet that comes with this specific watch. Um, however, I do think it keeps the um, sort of aesthetics of this specific piece in check with the era that it's from. If you look at it on the wrist, you can really see it, it, it fits the sort of stylistic elements that I think the 1970s really bring out. So that's the first watch we're going to be looking at. The second watch we're going to be looking at is this um, Le Coutre um, Memovox, which is an alarm, a mechanical alarm watch pre produced by Le Coutre. And um, one of the reasons why I included this is I actually think the condition of this watch is absolutely impeccable. Um, especially from a dial perspective. So I think this is a good way of sort of um, good, good comparison here. So as I mentioned in the introduction of this video, condition of watches um, can vary. You can have watches that look extremely, uh, that are in extremely good condition um, with very little signs of wear, and then you can have watches that have a little bit more wear. If we look at this Caravelle Diver, one of the things that you'll probably notice of the, about it is you can see that the dial has a couple of um, spots on them, kind of like stars. Um, another thing you'll probably notice is if you look at the hours and, and, and minutes hand, you'll notice that some of the luminescent material has actually fallen off. And so it's actually, um, there. you could describe that as there's holes in the hours and minutes hand. If you look at the overall condition of the case, um, you can see a little bit of wear, some scratches here and there. Um, so definitely, a, 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 it's been it's been used, but I wouldn't say it could be described as abused. Now, one of the things that I think about when I look at this watch is <clears throat> this is this watch shows its character. It shows its age, and it definitely um, kind of has come on a journey since its its production. If you look at this Le Coultre here, I think this is sort of like the opposite end of the spectrum. You can see 
The dial of this watch is in extremely good condition. Um, it has patinaed to this really beautiful gold cream um, look to it. You can see a real gold, gold hue to the sort of out, outer disc. And if you look at the inner disc, you can see sort of gold around the outsides of it, but a real nice sunburst silver look to the, um, to the inner disc. Um, another thing to note, if you look at the, the overall condition of the case, I think would be described as a little bit better. It's a 10 karat, um, 10 karat gold plating. Um, but has fewer scratches and looks a little bit better, cosmetically speaking, than maybe the Caravel um, does itself. So I guess the real question is, which one of these watches, um, from a condition perspective, would I be interested in looking at uh, as a potential collector? Um, I think the real, the real conclusion of this is, it depends on what type of collector you are and what is important to you. So. I'll talk through maybe both sides of it. So from the Caravelle's perspective, one of the things that I look for in, in vintage watches is I think the stories behind these watches are what make, make vintage watches an extremely important part of a, a collection. Knowing where they came from, knowing the history of the watch and the stories that, they, that it holds, I think is an important aspect of it. One of the things with the watch that has gone on some adventures is the fact that it will show signs of that adventure on it. The, su the, the sort of speckled dial that it has tells a story about the watch. The luminescent material falling out of the hours and minutes hand tells a story about the watch. Even the fading of the red triangle on the bezel of this watch tells a story. And um, for me, it doesn't attach to the overall beauty that this watch actually holds. Um, if, I think, if I look at a watch and I think it's beautiful, I think that's the most important part. Uh, aesthetically speaking. Um, I think there's another sort of angle that you can go for it from a movement perspective. Um, I want the original movement, obviously. I think um, a serviced movement is, is fine, but I think a serviced movement is totally fine, but I personally like to know that the, the movement inside of this watch is as, as original as it was when it was originally produced. So that's a big factor for me, but it might not be a factor for you. If you want to overhaul the movement because it isn't telling time or came in a different condition, that's totally fine too. So I think the argument for a watch like this, at least from my perspective, is it's gonna tell the story that the watch has been on. It shows the adventures that it's, that it's gone on. And I think that to really sum it up, this Caravelle Diver does not look like any other Caravelle Diver out there. And so the adventure that this watch went on has created a unique story for this watch, a unique look for this specific, um, I guess, a specific run of this reference. And so that means um, I have a relatively unique Caraval Diver with me. Moving on to the sort of the, the I guess, the le culture or the um, as close to new as possible, less, less age than the Caraval sort of argument. Um, I think some things that I think about when, I, when, I, when I'm thinking about this topic is a lot of the times it's very difficult to find um, original runs of watches where you can see what the brand originally wanted the watch to look like at when it came out. And so having a good, spec having a good um, model from that reference allows you to show someone and say this is what the watch was meant to look like in the 1960s um, and um, it hasn't changed since the 1960s and so over the last 60 years, this is exactly what it is supposed to look like. Um, another sort of part of, of wanting a watch that's as close to new as possible is um, when you are um, looking to perhaps start a collection of watches and, and, um, and are looking for specific um, models, you fall in love with the original um, sort of design of the of the model that you're looking for. So if I was looking for a Memovox specifically from this reference, I'd be looking for, I, I would fall in love with the fact that this case is, is beautiful gold, that the lugs sort of stand out nicely and integrate with the case. I would be looking for uh, signed crowns, which is what how they originally came. Um, and a watch that still has the normal hue of the original watch that I fell in love with. If you're able to find that, then you sort of tick all the boxes for a watch that should be that I want to be added to my collection. 
let's say this watch, maybe some of the gold plating had been coming off, the dial hadn't aged as, as um, evenly as this, you're really looking at a watch that has um, changed from its original design. And I think that's what a lot of people sort of, um, why a lot of people look for the watch that are in original condition or as close to original condition as possible. Um, another thing, just I mentioned it about the Caravel, I'll mention it about this one as well. I think the movement sort of holds true as well. I want a movement that was originally produced for this specific watch um, and was meant to be running for, for this. I want the original pieces of it because again, it's as close to the original concept for this watch as possible. And I think that's a valid argument as well. So I guess I can sort of talk about it from a personal perspective, you know, which one of these would I have? Would I have the one that's as close to original as possible? Would I have the one that shows a little bit of age? It's a tough question for me because I, I see the validity in both. Um, I think if anything, uh, I would be totally happy if, if I was able to get a watch in original condition or that shows its age. I see the benefits of having a watch that's in original condition, but I also see the beauty in something that shows its story and age and, and, um, and is almost a little bit more unique than, than sort of the other reference or the other models in this specific reference. Um, so for me, I'd say it depends. It depends on the watch. It depends on the purpose of the watch when, it, when I'm adding it to my collection. But I think at the end of the day, you have to figure out what type of collector are you? Do you want to have something that shows its age and tells a story? Do you want something that can tell the story about the original intent of that watch? Um, I think that's really just totally up to you. Um, regardless, um, I think you're going to enjoy the watch that you uh, have the opportunity to own, to wear, um, or not wear. Um, but as a collector, I think you might want to just think about this sort of concept and topic um, before diving into um, purchasing a watch because you want to be happy with the, with, the, with the purchase that you make. I hope this helped sort of walk through uh, some of the things that I think about when I'm when I'm thinking about the condition of a watch um, Let me flip perspective so we can close out the video I hope you guys enjoyed looking at the condition of these two watches and engaging in a discussion about What is important to collectors when it comes to the condition of the watches that they're looking for? Um, for their collections as I said repeatedly This is really a personal preference if you like watches that show a little bit more age or perhaps don't mind uh, the, the polished, an odd polished lug, that's up to you. Um, but if you like um, pristine condition watches that are basically new old stock um, that have all original parts, that's totally up to you as well. Um, at the end of the day, it's your hobby. You should enjoy the watch that you, the way you want to. And so, um, and so if that's the case, you should just make sure you find the watches that you're able to in, in the condition that you want them to be in. If you are new to Life on the Wrist, be sure to hit the subscribe button to join the Life on the Wrist family. We do a range of videos about watches, so be sure to check out some of the other videos. Um, so, and let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this video. I'd love to hear your thoughts and engage in a conversation about what you think is important when it comes to the condition of vintage watches. If you wouldn't mind smashing that like button for us for our youth analytics, it really does help us out. And with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time.